Hello everyone, back again for more Civ 7 updates. The developers released a stream where they played through the Antiquity Age and talked about some of the changes and gave a breakdown of like all of the new stuff that's going to be added and just basically gave a rundown of how the game's going to operate and this is a sort of breakdown of everything that was said and announced within that. And also then we're going to discuss sort of the responses to a lot of the backlash that they have received. Um, because of some of those changes and how they are trying to re how they responded to that. So the first thing was minor rivers versus navigable rivers. So minor rivers are what we are more used to, just the simple like line of water that goes through the middle of the hexes, and navigable riv navigable rivers are the much wider ones. And minor rivers flow into navigable river navigable rivers. Simple as that. Now. You no longer start with a unit like a warrior as you would in Civ 6, um, but that becomes your first choice. It becomes one of your choices in your first production, which all only takes one turn, and you choose between a warrior and a scout. Now, also, there are changes to technologies, and the bonus for the developments and improvements are unlocked through the technologies, such as additional food for farms, production for mines, etc. Now, they talked about how the terrain had changed, with rough tiles versus wet tiles that all change depending on the biome and unit movement is changed and differently affected by these. Um, cliffs and wet tiles act as exclusion zones that units either cannot move on to or that soak up all of their movement points, which is something that we did see in Civ 6. Um, there's now a new search ability which replaces the tribal huts and they grant better bonuses as trade-offs and there's also some narrative events influenced by our actions in the game that will also grant sort of similar decisions. So there's all of that involved. Uh, no builders, uh, you have a grow city action instead. You select a tile to grow into and an improvement is automatically placed on that tile. And the growth is kind of must be connected to a previous tile. And then they talked about the difference between rural versus urban developments. Urban developments lose the natural bonuses gained by the technologies that rural developments get. So they will lose like production from mines or food from farms, but they instead gain building yields, similar to those gained by districts. And walls are now built district by district, adding defences to those districts, so it's going to be a little bit harder for you to actually conquer a city, because you have to go through each uh, defence to get the entire city. Uh, then they talked about how the sort of changing civilizations was going to affect buildings, and they talked about how each certain civs would have a unique two unique buildings that would grant unique bonuses and you can place them separately on different sides of the city if you wanted to or you could place them together to create a unique quarter that grants a larger bonus and unlocks unique civics for that civilization and they remain they may become less useful but they remain for the entirety of the game and that's part of their whole thing of trying to make sure that we still have some semblance of connection from each phase of the game, despite the changing civs that they've talked about. So now towns are different. Settlers settlers that used to form cities now only form towns, and they collect all of the yields around them, and production is converted into gold as they cannot build buildings by themselves, or at least they are limited in what they can build. Towns have specializations, farming, healing units, mining, and trading. And excess happiness, which is a new, or a little sort of a brought back from Civ Five resource uh, can be funneled into celebrations that grant boost production and some sort of resource and each different government has a different kind of celebration that changes the bonus. Happiness is affected by the settlement cap so I guess depending on how many settlements you've built will affect it positively or negatively didn't go into much detail. Um, the soft settlement cap so it can be upgraded so that means that I'm guessing either technology or civics will be able to increase the number of settlements you have Specialists from Civ Five have returned, that and they allow they are kind of what allow you to develop these special buildings and quarters, uh, without needing to expand your cities to build more cities outwards to grant bonuses. So this is all coming back to the idea of they're making it so that you're playing tall rather than wide. Uh, so you're focusing on developing your cities, using the towns to gain gain all these resources rather than just expanding your empire out as rapidly as you can. They talked about trading, how all the resources move through. Some resources are local, so only available in limited towns or in a limited area, and some resources are across the empire. Uh, the commanders 
upgrade tree has a leadership section which can help them when they're stationed in settlements so they're not just offensive and the sort of white boundary which is sort of about the the normal hex of a first founded city uh, can be increased now roman commanders as that was the civ they were playing as in the demo uh can build settlements apparently so that's going to be interesting and commander deaths result in damage to the units that are connected to them via the packing and unpacking mechanic that they talked about earlier in this sort of process and they announced a new civ which was greece this is going to be an antiquity uh age civ so i'm guessing the way it's going to work based on what i've heard is that you have and what this revealed is that you're going to have a civ starting out in the antiquity era and then you have new cultures that are developed over the two other ages which i believe which i think is what it seems like how they were i'm not surprised that greece was announced um both in terms of antiquity age civ that's sort of height of their prime very accurate uh just a very very common civ to appear in greece i'm also not in civilization i think they've been in every single one at, with various different changes also not even less surprised by the fact that they are a cultural diplomatic focused they could be militaristic but i think they're going to maybe doing a bit more of the sort of athens athens focused one rather than the say sparta or macedon uh unique units the unique unit for greece is something similar to what great peoples were with their abilities but not much of that is revealed not much not they tried they did a lot of stuff to hide of the extra things which is why I think we still have to wait until the game releases to truly know the scope of all of it. But this seem, seems something quite interesting uh that we do have some kind of great people or something like that. Um now the legacy options is part of the way you sort of have some semblance of continuity throughout your game. They are formed through the milestones that you complete over the whatever age it is. and the sort of more you complete them the more legacies that are available to you and obviously that leads into the victory conditions you get at the end and obviously that helps you as you transition into a new culture and the screen they showed revealed the abbasids as a new culture i'm guessing that would be maybe for egypt i i mean you could transition to any of them but i feel like that would be a bit more of a connection to egypt given the location and obviously uh there it looks like there is going to be 12 options available for the transition into the exploration age and obviously it's now up to the player to choose how they move into the next how they move there's a lot of options available to them so all of this is just very good news very good information and now another said legacy milestones build up your civ build up your layers of history and this is the follow through from the previous ages that we need and they're kind of the equivalent to sort of that sort of era points system from Civ 6 that was quite annoying so that you can get a golden age legacy and you can get something equivalent to a dark age uh for those of us who don't manage to reach any milestone and you also have the ability to change your capital's location for free and the last thing they reveal is they did reveal some things about how religion's going to function in the game uh with some changes to the benefits of pantheons but them basically still existing and it gets more hands on and intense in the exploration age but it's no longer a victory condition which i'm very happy with i did not like religion being a, it was a very hard one and unless you had sort of very hyper focused civs i just didn't like it very much so now we're going to talk about the backlash and the responses and They have Fire Access has responded to this by talking about the changes made to the game and how it will prevent snowballing and will make the game more balanced. Now, I always thought that snowballing was a fun part of civilization. I can understand how to developers it might seem annoying, but I think all of us agree that snowballing was actually kind of fun. It was fun to find civilizations like uh, Byzantium and Babylon that just was so broken that you could very easily start in the ancient era but have basically already won by the medieval and i don't necessarily think that's as bad of a problem as they think it is but they did mention how late game civs have played less in civ 6 than others and i do kind of get that it is kind of it was kind of annoying to have civilizations like the united states england uh what's another more modern centered one uh maybe is it the ones like those where their abilities didn't really kick in until 
the industrial the industrial ages so much much later on in the game but i do also think that that's one of those things where civ 6 is meant to be a very highly strategic game so that was kind of more of like okay well your abilities activate then how do we build up to that point how do we go how do we spend our few a the few ages before that building up to the point where that ability kicks in and we work very strongly on it i don't think it's necessarily i understand it but once again maybe they just need to sort of consider that the fan base is actually much smarter than they think it is. And they believe that breaking up the game into those three ages makes that problem easier or fixes it. It also says that micromanagement, making it easier to micromanagement, micromanage is easier. And that's the one I genuinely agree with. I think that you get to a point where you're managing 12 up to 20 cities, multiple units, and it can get really annoying. And I think this is going to this having them saying that this is going to help them with that. I think is very useful. Maybe not necessarily making it easier at all times, but maybe just making it more consistent so it doesn't change too much between a certain point. You get to a certain point where you are micromanaging a lot, but it is relatively, but is a bit easier and it stays consistent up to that point. So I agree with that one. I agree that making it things easier to micromanage is quite an important thing to consider out. They then threw out a few statistics about how half of Civ 6 players never finished a campaign. And it's not because the game was boring entirely, that's not the entire reason, but because of a myriad of reasons. It could be just that the game was too, too, was too challenging, um, maybe that they just didn't want to, they only played it, they barely played it, so they never got to, or if there's someone like me who just doesn't, who just doesn't like finishing campaigns for some reason. Um, and it's, but it's also like, if we're having fun, regardless of whether we finish in campaign or not, what is the problem? It's not a big deal that no one's finishing the campaign because it's about having fun. I feel like they seem to be pushing that away more than the having fun part, which I've seen through a lot of the early stuff about this. Um, but they hope that this can make the game more consistent and easy to manage. And I'm all for that. I'm all for trying to make the game easier and more accessible. It's a very challenging, it can be a very challenging game. So trying to make it more accessible to other people is understandable. But I also have to think think they have to consider the very large fan base that this game has developed over the many, many years it's been around and how all of those people have probably learned quite how to play Civ quite well. And I think maybe they're taking it too far in one direction and they need to find a good middle ground. Um, you know, they talked about how every Civ game is one third original, one third improvements, and one third stays the same. And I think they're maybe taking it too far in the other direction and not giving enough time to improve on things or to stick to some of the original stuff that we actually did like. So it's it's an interest. It's always going to get any new game in a franchise is always going to have controversy. It's always going to be a challenge but i think as i've said um it's about we got to wait for the release none of this is going this is helpful but it's not really going to be finalized until that that final when the when again when it finally releases basically and all all of this has helped me get excited for the game a bit more they've explained many of the changes and it seems that my initial fears have been addressed and some of the changes actually seem like they are very strong and we'll make some areas of the games that we're lacking, like districts, much better and religion, much more enjoyable, city building as well. I still think that, as I said, final opinions will be seen when the game is released. But for now, I am getting excited. So I hope you all enjoyed this one, and I will see you next time. I need them to stop releasing information now. I can't keep doing these.